she loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Oh, she loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Oh, she loves me not. She loves me. Happy early Valentine's Day, everybody. And here it is. The ESU Cab Control Wireless Control System. And, um, yeah, if you can see that, there's the throttle that looks like a phone and the cab control. And then over in the blank spot here, there's a power supply. And I got this from Yankee Dabbler. They threw a card in. Yeah, I got this through Yankee Dabbler, and I got it with using... Vinny's code, uh, Vinny BNSF6951. Um, he has a 7% discount at Yankee Dabbler, and I used that, and uh, yeah, it saved some money. So thank you very much, Vinny. So let's see if I can unbox this, being somewhat on camera. All right. Everything is in a plastic bubble, if that's what you want to call it. So there it is. It's got a plastic lid over the top. And here we have, in the bottom, we have our cab control DC system user manual. And also a quick start guide. Uh, way off camera. There we go. And I think that this book has everything that we need to know about setting, getting it set up. So that's a good thing. And in here, of course, we have our power supply. This hooks directly up to the cab cab control part of it and there's a dial on the back here if you have larger gauges you can jack up the voltage um, but for end scale like I have we want that all the way down and then we have the oh let's see if I can get it out we have the cab control unit and this provides the Wi-Fi signal for the throttle. And um, on the back, it has various connections. Uh, our wire, whoops, our wiring will go in over here. Uh, power supply, and these I'm not too sure about yet. Yeah, we'll see. And then there's also a LAN port. If you hook it up to the LAN, you can get updates. Uh, via the internet or you can plug in a flash drive here and get updates for it that way which is what I'll probably have to do and then our throttle if I can get it out all right there it is got some bubbles in it but yeah it's uh, basically it's a smartphone form factor um, doesn't really match up to this the exact size it's a little thicker but uh, we have our four programmable buttons over here on the sides and uh, the throttle is motorized on this I think that accounts for you know the device being a little thicker and uh, when we push it down it'll it'll motor back up but that will do an auto reverse so that's pretty sweet I'll have to figure out what I'm gonna put on these buttons these are all programmable 
Um, so there it is, and they give you a nice uh, USB cable and a lanyard with it so that you don't drop it. Very nice. ESU cab control. So that's it. Um, all I have to do now is figure out what to do with it. Okay, another little side note here. After I got everything out of the bubble pack, I, I've i been noticing, I thought it was because it's so cold here in Texas right now, I thought that uh, there was some marking on the cover of this power supply. Um, I thought it was just kind of frozen, so I was letting it heat up here in the house. Well, as it turns out, you probably saw this in the other part of the video, but they included a little note that says, we are aware that the case of your power supply included with your new cab control system may have a few scratches and scuff marks on it, and they're working with the factory to resolve the problem. So, you know, it says rest assured that uh, the product is brand new, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm not worried about it, but uh, it's nice of them to include that. I, I did think that it looked a little bit funky, but you know what? It's going to be underneath the bench. Does it matter? No. Well, as you can see, a plan is forming. Um, I've decided that since my bench work uses solid copper Romex wiring, I need to have these units latched down. Um, also, this means that I could slide the whole thing out on the bottom shelf of my layout uh, if I need to access any of the settings on here. So, I think what I'm going to do is we'll have the uh, power supply feed in there and I'll run that solid copper wire bus in here to these adapters and latch them down to this fiber board also. And then the, the whole thing, I can just slide it in and out as necessary. I think I've come up with a working solution here to get this ESU system on the bottom shelf of my layout. Um, this level will be a DC layout, so I'm putting all the working components down here in the bottom. So uh, what I have is these wires here are coming from the track. That's my main bus. So that's going into the little green plugs on the back of the cab control. Um, I've got the power supply hooked up to the cab control. Um, and the next step is starting up the system. I'll have to get the power cable, which is back underneath the shelving here, plugged into the power supply. So um, I think think I'm about ready to crank this thing up they tell you to start this up with no engine on the track so uh, I'll get that all prepared and carry on from there all right hopefully you can see this um, I just plugged the power cable into the power supply and uh, the cab control is doing its little thing you can see the red light on the power supply and then the cab control is going through a series of startup operations and we'll see what we get all right I'm gonna take the throttle here I think I'm gonna have focusing issues start this thing up and let's see what happens I've been reading through the instruction card Hopefully I'll be able to get it running here. It is an Android device. There we go. So the first thing I'm going to do, I guess, is go into the setup and see if there's any connection. Wi-Fi. ESU Wi-Fi connected. I got lucky. Sometimes they don't find each other, is what I've heard. Okay. So 
So we're on with that. I'm going to back up and go to cab control. Oh, there goes the throttle that just motored up. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, I also noticed that when the throttle was powered up and the Wi-Fi was selected, I got a blue light down on the cab control. So apparently that's the Wi-Fi light. All right, well, to answer my own statement slash question from a couple minutes ago, when I finished getting this all hooked up and getting the throttle powered up and connected, what I actually got was a big lot of nothing. Um, if you can see it right now, there is a blue light shining. There's a solid green light over to the right side. And then over here, there's a flashing green light. So what I found out is slow flashing green light the way it is right now is a good thing. If I take the throttle, let's see if we'll be able to focus here. If I take this throttle and go ahead and go into cab control, I can see my function keys and my headlamp buttons showing there. So we are connected and if I hit the stop pause button, which is not working now. All right, there we go. The little light there on the side just went green. So we're good. That means I've got power to the track right now. That's great. Well, the problem I ran into when I first hooked this up is in the ESU documentation, it says that for N scale, you should be at the lowest setting possible for output voltage on this power supply. And to do that, you would have to have this little potentiometer back here turned all the way down. Well, that would be in a perfect world, but in my world, it did not work. If I turn that potentiometer all the way down the way they say, guess what? Now, I have a flashing, fast flashing green light. And on the remote, on the throttle, I can't, you can see a momentary green flash. I can't turn on the track power. So what I discovered here is that in order to get this thing to power up properly, you gotta turn this potentiometer up a little. So with that potentiometer turned up a little, now I have my, my little green light and we have track power. I don't have a way to measure voltage on the track. Um, my voltmeter cannot read DCC signal. But what I can do is I can pull, I can take my voltmeter, set it to DC, and what I can do is I can take this plug from the power supply and I can read what it's putting out. And right now I'm at about 14.97 volts. So, My Kato DCC locomotive is, they say, well, you should be at 12 volts. 15 is as low as you can go on this system. Hopefully, it's going to work okay. I have a RR amp meter on order so that I can actually just go around and measure the voltage drops on the track. All right, so with everything adjusted it's at about just below 15 volts uh, everything is green and powered on with the 
throttle and uh, with my when I hit the light button you can see the lights came on then they go off um, unfortunately I don't have a good example of a locomotive to show you here with this ESU system uh, my locomotive does not have a sound decoder so I'm very limited in what I can do with it but uh, what you can see is let me adjust my you now there there we go with the throttle going up then we go turn it back and that reverses the direction no it didn't work there we go got it in reverse turn it down again let it throttle up yeah change the direction so you know all in all I mean despite problems with the uh, with the voltages and whatnot it did it was pretty easy to take out of the box get everything hooked up and and it did work I just had to figure out the whole deal with the potentiometer and how much of a threshold it has before it actually turns on so at this point I'm gonna call it good all right everybody that's my unboxing and install and setup of the ESU cab control system uh, despite a few hiccups it actually went pretty well and um, the, the throttle we're still greened up uh, if I could get it to focus here you can see my uh, GE all right come on my ES 44 AC BNSF locomotive is in there now this is not a railcom enabled locomotive so I had to enter that into this throttle manually but it was really easy everything that you need is on this throttle um, I, I just gave it a name gave it the address that it came with out of the box which was 03 and uh, gave it a name gave it a picture done deal and it's ready to go so anyway happy Valentine's Day everybody a little bit early and uh, thank you for watching uh, give me some thumbs up comments subscribe and I will see you at the next stop